James Accord was the only private individual in the world with the legal right to own radioactive material. He had his license number tattooed on the back of his neck and moved home to live on the edge of the most radioactive place in America, Hanford site. James was the first nuclear artist, using radioactive materials to create artwork which spoke about the strange role nuclear technology played in the modern world. His art is full of religious symbolism. His greatest project was sadly unrealized, a plan to create a radioactive Stonehenge in the wasteland around Hanford, a warning to later generations, perhaps thousands of years in the future, to avoid drinking water or growing crops there. James became a popular figure within the scientific community. In a world of brilliant researchers, he was a storyteller who made people ask questions and see things in a new light. Above all, he brought culture, art and religion into a conversation usually reserved for hard science. And yet, outside the conferences and nuclear research plants, radiation has long had its own popular mythology. It includes famous stories like Oppenheimer and Chernobyl, but also strange ideas. That radiation is glowing green, that it can create monsters and superheroes, that it has seemingly magical qualities. James Accord's art builds on a long line of authors, scientists and businessmen who have helped to shape the mythology of radiation. Barely 100 years on from its discovery, the way we view and talk about it today is the product of our history, a past in which radiation is magic. Path seldom trod. Radiation is electromagnetic energy moving from one place to another. It can be described as waves or particles. This includes everyday things like light, microwaves and radio waves. But in the realm of ultraviolet light, radiation experiences a change. It becomes ionizing. This means that the radiation has so much energy, it can detach electrons from atoms. This high energy radiation is the one which can most easily damage cells in our bodies. Although radiation has existed from the earliest moments of the universe, it was not a special part of the human worldview or cosmology until 100 years ago. Unlike the sea or sky, the entire mythology of radiation had to be constructed from scratch. When astronomers look at stars or planets, they no longer believe that these are spirits or lights from heavenly realms. But the old names and patterns colour the meaning given to them. Our solar system is named after gods, the patterns in our stars drawn to resemble ancient myths. Radiation science has no ancient heritage to draw on. It's as if an invisible part of the universe appeared suddenly and we had to start making sense of it, imagining it, telling stories about it. The stories began in 1895 when Wilhelm Röntgen accidentally discovered the existence of X-rays, capturing an image of his wife's hand. Röntgen sent his shadow pictures to friends. The German physicist Otto Lummer reflected, I could not help thinking that I was reading a fairy tale. Only the actual photograph proved this was a fact. On the heels of Röntgen's X-rays was the discovery of natural radioactivity. Henri Becquerel found he could produce similar X-ray pictures with crystals containing uranium. To describe energy coming from these elements, the term radioactivity was introduced. The immediate applications of these discoveries seemed to be medical. X-rays were used to examine fractures and help surgeons. Radiation was on the frontiers of medical practice. It was like the Wild West. One of the early radiation cowboys was the homeopathic doctor Emil Grubbe, who claimed to have started using X-rays to treat cancer patients in 1896. Like many things said by Grubbe, the claim is disputed. But Grabe certainly did experiment with x-rays in treating patients. His exposure to massive doses of radiation left him with multiple tumours. He underwent 90 operations to cut out cancerous growths and even used his own x-ray technique to kill his own tumours. 
Early experiments showed that excessive radiation could damage the body, leading to hair loss, infertility, and even radiation burns. But for doctors and patients, the dangers of radiation were poorly understood side effects of a new miracle discovery. In the 1910s and 20s, radiation was used to treat everything from tuberculosis to depression. Soon, famous health springs around the world were discovered to be very slightly radioactive due to trace amounts of radon gas dissolved in the water. Doctors quickly assumed it was the radiation which made these springs healthy. Dr. C. G. Davis wrote in the American Journal of Clinical Medicine that radioactivity prevents insanity rouses noble emotions, retards old age, and creates a splendid, youthful, joyous life. Radiation was a miracle drug, the hidden secret of the universe now revealed by scientific progress. Businessmen and quack doctors quickly jumped on the baggage train. Toothpaste, face cream, and soap containing radium were soon available. J. Bernard King got into trouble because his Ray Cura, a quilted pad, claimed to be filled with radium, just had ordinary soil in it. To try and manage the growth of radiation products, the American Medical Association introduced some basic standards which had to be met to gain their approval. When it came to devices which claimed to irradiate drinking water, they stated that the product must produce more than two microcuries of radon per litre of water in a 24-hour period. One victim of this guidance was the golfer Eben Byers, who took Radiothor to improve his health after an injury. Radiothor confirmed to the American Medical Association guidance, containing two microcuries of radium per bottle, and Byers drank two or three bottles a day. But after two years of drinking Radiothor, strange symptoms began to appear. Byers began to develop headaches, lose weight and teeth. A visiting lawyer found him in a terrible state. His whole upper jaw, excepting two front teeth, and most of his lower jaw had to be removed. All the remaining bone tissue of his body was disintegrating and holes were forming in his skull. Byers' passing in 1932 spelled the end of the radioactive patent cure market in America. The public began to view radiation as something miraculous but dangerous. This was only confirmed by the fate of the radium girls, female factory workers who had been working in a luminous paint factory. The paint was a mixture of radium and zinc sulfide, producing a glowing green colour which shone in the dark. The women were instructed to straighten their paintbrushes by sucking them, leading to the ingestion of fatal doses of radiation. The story of the radium girls has become an important part of the radiation canon. It's the reason why radioactive objects are often presented as glowing green in cartoons. Radiation itself has no specific colour. It's only when mixed with phosphorescent compounds like zinc sulphide it produces a glowing green light. By the late 1930s, radiation had started to acquire some of the imaginative characteristics we associate with it today. It was green, it was potentially dangerous, it was sometimes medically useful. But it would only be after the Second World War that radiation began to be associated with social transformation and its threat moved from the personal to the global. In 1938, Albert Einstein sent a letter to American President Roosevelt warning him Germany might be able to create an atomic bomb. Roosevelt's response, a scrawled OK, was the start of an enormous project which would employ over 130,000 people at its peak. The scientist Julius Robert Oppenheimer would lead the project from 1942. After the first successful test of the bomb in 1945, Oppenheimer would turn to the Hindu scriptures. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty, and to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Bombs developed in the Manhattan Project were used in nuclear strikes at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Images of burnt bodies and rubble from Japan would haunt people's imagination in the nervous post-war world. The way we viewed radiation changed forever. The scientists working on nuclear projects were not necessarily immune to these dangers. In 1945, whilst working with a radioactive plutonium core, Harry Daglian accidentally dropped a brick onto the core 
giving himself a fatal dose of radiation poisoning. A year on, the same core was being used by Louis Slotin in an experiment when a screwdriver he was using slipped, causing the core to give out a massive burst of radiation. Slotin died in nine days. The plutonium sphere was renamed the Demon Core. It was later melted down to be used in other projects. The dangers posed by radiation in the lab were the source of its famous symbols. In 1946, a group of researchers at the University of California Radiation Laboratory doodled suggested warning signs. The most popular was the one showing three waves of energy shooting out from an atom. Originally, the background colour was blue, but workers requested it in yellow to help it stand out better. These signs added yellow to a radioactive palette previously dominated by green. But if people were looking for a symbolic manifestation of the threat of radiation, they only needed to visit the cinema. In 1953, the first of many radioactive monster movies premiered. The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, a sleeping dinosaur, was awoken by nuclear tests. A year later, Japan's Godzilla made its first appearance, also awoken by nuclear bombs and immune to toxic radiation. Whilst radiation was now firmly connected to catastrophic destruction, there was another strain of research which connected it to transformation. Hermann Muller won the Nobel Prize in 1946 for his work showing how exposure to radiation led to mutation in fruit flies. Muller had shown the more X-rays the flies were exposed to, the higher the number of mutations. Despite very high mortality rates, Muller believed he could speed up the production of desirable mutations in crops and livestock. Drawing on these claims, and ignoring the costs associated with them, in comics, films and books, the invisible powers of radiation played the role magic might play in a fairy tale. Characters were mutated and transformed into heroes and villains by radioactivity. Superheroes used it as a source of power. And like all good stories, they spoke into the conflicts of the day. In the attack of the 50-foot woman, radiation created a feminist menace to Wasp America. The progressive danger of radiation threatened to undermine the values of traditional society. Whilst in John Wyndham's novel The Chrysalids, the opposite was the case. An intolerant fundamentalist society persecuted the telepathic mutant children produced in the aftermath of a nuclear bomb. The science fiction author Arthur C. Clarke famously said, Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. But radiation is not even necessarily an advanced technology. It's simply become a magical force. Writers and artists can play with their stories. The transformative power of radiation is part of the Marvel canon, post-apocalyptic landscape and monster movies, and this has had a significant impact on public perception of all things nuclear, including power. Nuclear fission involves the splitting of dense atoms into lighter ones. Doing this can create energy which can be harnessed to produce electricity at a nuclear power plant. The first nuclear reactor was built by Enrico Fermi in 1942. In the following years, the development of nuclear power took a back seat to headlines dominated by stories of atom bombs and apocalypse. But by the 1960s, nuclear power plants were being built across the world. Early issues were often covered up or minimised by governments. The Windscale nuclear plant in the UK ran into trouble when uranium in the reactor caught fire. The temperature rose to 1,300 degrees Celsius in one part of the plant before the blaze died down. A more serious and legendary leak occurred at the Chernobyl reactor in Ukraine, which remains the worst nuclear plant disaster in history. The leak of coolant in the reactor led to a meltdown, destroying the containment building and beginning a fire which lasted several days. Radiation spread across Europe, leading to several hundred additional cancers. But perhaps Chernobyl is most famous for its exclusion zone. A 30-mile radius of deserted land evacuated during the disaster. The zone is like a small post-apocalyptic world. It's acquired its own mythical place in the radiation canon. The Ukrainian game series Stalker, a first-person horror shooter, takes place within a Chernobyl zone peopled with radioactive monsters and mysterious dangers. 
The more recent Fukushima disaster in Japan was the result of a tsunami and earthquake, which cut off power to the reactor and caused it to overheat. One of the interesting things about the Fukushima disaster is how responses to it were affected by memories of atomic bombs in Japan and the Chernobyl reactor. Over 160,000 people evacuated the area during a chaotic process. The Japanese radiation scientist Sunichi Yamashita would later describe what he believed was the excessive response as radiophobia. Nuclear power accidents seem to have only confirmed the narrative about radiation that came from the radium girls and nuclear weapons. Quietly riding on the coattails of public perception is the artist Cornelia Hess Honegger, a scientific illustrator who has now become famous for her paintings of mutated bugs from the Chernobyl exclusion zone. But Hess Honegger's work also draws on an older idea about radiation. Like Muller's mutant fruit flies, these bugs are evidence of radioactive transformation, proof that nature survives disaster and evolves, sometimes making monsters, other time things of beauty. In Overlooked Insects, Hess Honegger has rediscovered the two faces of radiation, which have been with us from the discovery of the X-ray. The destroyer of worlds might also be the creator of new ones. In 2019, representatives of the company Expert Pro Network began selling magic cards to locals in rural areas of Thailand. The cards were said to have healing properties, and people were encouraged to rub them on their bodies and dip them in drinking water. An investigation by scientists found uranium had been spread across the surface of the cards. The Thai magic cards show that even after the nuclear disasters of the 20th century, the popular idea radiation has magical, healing qualities remains. And there's a twisted kind of truth to this. Many civilian radiation accidents are caused by radioactive hospital equipment, which has been poorly disposed of. Meanwhile, in the realms of fantasy and science fiction, radiation has become a magical explanation for things. The transformation of individuals and societies. But what I find interesting is how humans have frequently appealed to something old or mythical when confronted with radiation in the real world. Luma, who compared X-rays to a fairy tale. Oppenheimer, who imagined himself as the Hindu god Vishnu. The scientists who labelled a plutonium core demonic. The prehistoric movie monsters awoken by real bombs. Even the artist James Accord, who tried to use megaliths and medieval Catholicism to give new meaning to nuclear research. And if this shows humans take comfort in the familiar when confronted with something new, it also demonstrates an instinctive desire to weave the young science of radiation into our world, stories, and imagined cosmos. And this poses a bigger question. Are the stories and myths surrounding radiation a fixed canon? After the trauma of the past, is there room to write new tales? I want to tell you yes. Not only because humans are almost infinitely creative, but also because of new science and technology. Looming on the horizon is the prospect of nuclear fusion, the reverse of the fission we currently use in nuclear reactors. Fusion doesn't break heavy elements into light ones, it fuses light elements into heavy ones. It's what powers our sun. In December 2022, after decades of failure, scientists announced they had succeeded in creating a nuclear fusion reaction that released more energy than it consumed. It's hard to say whether fusion technology will tip the balance in favour of creation over destruction when it comes to public perception of radiation but it will be exciting to watch how it is integrated into the law. Radiation, after all, is still one of the youngest mythologies in the world. Please like and subscribe. I wish you a calm and peaceful day.